Alyssa Edwards. The next morning, when I opened my eyes, two keen eyes were staring down at me from where I was laying. The moment my eyes found the person staring down at me, he quickly rolled off the bed and sat facing the wall with his back to me. I looked around the room once again and sat up, wondering why Daniel had given me such a sharp turn but to my horror, I realized that I was naked. What? What happened last night? I asked with my voice breaking at this moment. I tried to recall what had happened last night but my mind was blank. The only thing I remembered was going to Johanna's place for a dress. How did this? Daniel? I called. Still, his naked back was the view I was getting from him. His silence was killing me. I will let my driver drive you home. Alyssa. Take last night as another payment for scratching my car. I hope we never meet again, Miss Edwards. I could not believe my ears. What? Daniel sprang to his feet after pulling on some boxers and without even a turn towards me. He disappeared into the bathroom and I heard the shower bin turned on. The tears in my eyes could not stop falling. I refused to digest what was happening. Everything was happening just too fast and I refused to believe that Daniel who started as innocent and needing help was going to do such a thing to me. I continued to lay in the bed, shaking with tears and trying to get myself to calm down but it was so hard. How did I come to this? What happened? What really happened? The last thing I wanted to happen was to be told the second time to leave his house and so I threw the sheets off my body and tearfully searched for my clothes. Hurriedly, I threw them on and rushed out of the room before the shower cut off. Outside of the large house, I ran downstairs, and to my surprise, a young woman was leaning on the kitchen counter sipping something from a red mug. He's probably done with you, right? Her words surprised me a little bit and instantaneously, I found myself wondering who she was. Was she Daniel's sister? Friend? Or girlfriend? I said nothing but deep down, I wanted to run out of the room for fear that she might see me break into tears at this point. Nevertheless, I stood there and watched her straightened with a smile on her face. He just wanted to be a little promiscuous after being with me for a while, so I apologize on his behalf if you felt a little special for one or two nights. I was shaking now. She was his girlfriend. He had a girlfriend and he was pretending as if he had no one in his life who could pull out that stupid plan he had with his parents. If he had a girlfriend, then that means... I am Clara, by the way. She said and walked away. Once I was out of his mansion, I realized how stupid I had been. I felt so dirty, but there was little I could do. I couldn't stop crying. The guard only gave me a nod and said, Miss, the driver is waiting for you over here. I glanced at what he was pointing at and I saw the man standing beside a Chrysler waiting for me. No, no. I am fine. I can get home by myself. Thank you. No, miss. Sir Daniel will be furious if he finds out that we allowed you to leave like this, the man said, referring to the short dress I was wearing right now. It was broad daylight and this dress was definitely not ideal for a nice Saturday morning. Oh, so he cared, huh? I am not going with that car and that's final. Please open the door for me. My voice broke with the tears that were welling up behind my throat and so the man ran and opened the small door for me to step out. Luckily, a cab drove by and quickly hailed it and jumped in before I broke into tears again. Where are we going ma'am? The cab driver asked. That hospital. That hospital down the road. I found my voice and he started. This was all Daniel was looking for, wasn't it? 
I should have known that guys like that would not want favors and I had been so stupid but I deserved it. Now everything was over and we could all move on with our lives. The cab stopped in front of the hospital and I got down. I realized that I didn't have money to pay. Luckily, Frank had been discharged and was walking out. I climbed down and he was surprised to see me dressed like that. But luckily he didn't ask any questions and he paid for the fare and hugged me. I cried into his shirt, hugging him tightly. Please, just hug me, Frank. My voice came out muffled. We hugged for a while and he took me to a friend's place. I got to have a quick shower and change into some of his clothes. I came out and he was having breakfast with his friend. Care you eat? Frank offered. I'm not hungry, I mumbled, tucking my strands of hair behind my ear. I thought at least having a shower and scrubbing myself off the memories would make me feel any better, but it didn't. Where did you go last night? He asked jamming his bread. A party. Whose party was that? You don't know them. I sat on the single couch by the glass window, hugging myself and looking outside, trying my best not to cry again. We'll be living here, for the time being, Alyssa. I don't want aunt to feed us again. I can now work and get us money. Once we have enough, we'll move out, he told me and I nodded. That was good. I'll go back to get some of your clothes. Write down the things you want me to take for you. I'll go there tomorrow. Okay. It's over. It's over. Alyssa Edwards. Two weeks later. I don't want to stay idle. Let me at least get a job down the street. No. I don't want you to work. I'll save up some money and you'll get back to school. Frank told me and I didn't want to argue much. He sat down and ate his breakfast, but he kept his gaze on me. What job are you going for anyways? He asked, making me turn. A waitress. Why are you asking me? You've gained weight. You need to work some off. He pointed and I stared down at myself. Okay. Later that day, I went down the road deciding to go in one of my brother's black t-shirts and army shorts. I had tied my hair into a messy bun and had tucked them under a black cap and had dressed shabbily like a tomboy. I knocked lightly on the door and walked in. The little restaurant had just opened so there were no customers around. The guy there was wiping the counter. He had brown hair and black eyes. He seemed to be in his late twenties. Oh, hello, good morning? I waved and he turned and gave me a smile. Good morning. I'm here to see if I can get the job. Waitress. I stuttered. You mean waiter? He corrected and I frowned. What? I'm a girl. I laughed nervously, taking off my cap. His eyes widened in realization and he laughed too. Of course. There's an apron over there. He pointed and I raised an eyebrow at him. No interview? I don't think I need to since I really need a hand. We'll have to talk about that one later. He explained and I nodded, doing as told. Evening. Thanks a lot for coming over to help, Alyssa, Tony said as we closed down the shop. Oh. It's really nothing. I just look forward to getting hired. I kinda need the job a lot. I told him putting my hat back on. I promise to recommend you to grandma when she comes. She's sassy, but she'll give you the job. He smiled and I nodded, smiling back. My smile didn't reach my eyes because I was feeling so tired and weak. I did a lot of errands today. Yes, that could be it. I'll have to head home now, Tony. See you later. I patted him on the back and headed home.
I walked home still not feeling well so I decided to see the doctor tomorrow. Maybe it's something serious. I was stopped by a familiar voice. Let's talk, Alyssa. Nick Troy had bought us drinks and we sat up the roof of some building, looking down at the cars passing and how the streets were decorated with lights. I took a long gulp of my Diet Coke and took in a deep breath. It was really refreshing. How have you been? He asked, not turning to look at me. Have you spoken with your friend lately? I bet he's told you everything. I snorted. His head snapped in my direction. Has anything happened between you guys? What have I missed these few weeks? He questioned and I was puzzled. You guys haven't spoken? We have, but he refused to go into details. He's even out of the country. What happened between you guys? What exactly did he tell you? Talking about him on a night like this was making me somehow uncomfortable, but I needed to talk to someone about this. Nick brought his beer to his lips and scoffed. I wish. Well, Daniel refuses to speak about you. Why what happened? That sentence hurt. What did I do? The only mistake I made was thinking he was a decent guy. I no longer owe him and that's what's important, Nick. Nick turned to me in disbelief. You paid your debts? How? I snorted and looked away, trying to hide the tears that were welling up in my eyes once again. It's been weeks since that incident and I had been doing just fine before Nick came here. His presence reminded me of Daniel. Even though they were friends, their resemblance was pretty significant. I stood up, brushing the dirt off my army shorts. I have to get going, Nick. See you later. I told him as he stood up too. Good night, Alyssa. Alyssa Edwards. The next day I found it completely hard to get out of bed. I felt so lightheaded and so weak. Yesterday's work really affected me. I tossed and turned on the bed, feeling nauseous. I managed to get down and went to my bathroom, brushed my teeth, and took my bath. I had worn a clean pair of black shorts and a white t-shirt and was combing my hair when the conversation I had with Nick came to mind. What if I hadn't gone to that party that day? Then none of this would have happened. This was the last thing I wanted to talk about so, I brushed that aside and went down for breakfast. You came home too late yesterday. You got me worried, Alyssa. Frank commented as he finished his food but I added more. I was only volunteering yesterday. I'll go for the real interview today. I'm a little nervous. I smiled and he placed his palm in mine, giving my hand a gentle squeeze. I believe in you. He smiled and I took in a deep breath. His friend just sat there and stared at me. I'll do the dishes today, I told them as I cleared the tables. Alyssa, do you notice? Chase pointed and I turned to face him. What? Last night you came home so tired. Are you sure you can handle that job with you being pregnant? He blurted out and my heart skipped a beat. What? My gaze dropped to my belly. What makes you think that? Frank asked with a chuckle. Then his eyes scanned my body. He was too calm for my liking. I'm a nurse. It's pretty normal for us to detect things like that but she can go for a checkup if you don't believe me. Chase explained and I stood still not knowing what to do. Is that Patterson guy, right? Frank asked his face void of emotions, which scared the living daylights out of me. I said nothing. I knew that Daniel was up to no good. No matter what they've planned Alyssa, you need to make sure and promise me that you'll stay clear of that guy, okay? He said and I reluctantly nodded but my mind was flying somewhere else. What was I going to do? 
I have another person growing inside of me and I. What do you suggest we do now? You'll have to keep the baby, Alyssa. I don't want anything to happen to you, he said. But I really don't want to have his baby. I want nothing of that night with me. Anything about that night disgusts me. I shook my head, tears flashing in my eyes. I can't have a baby now. I am not even done with high school. You want to have an abortion, then? Chase asked and I nodded. Are you really sure you don't want to have this baby? He asked. Why would Alyssa have that guy's baby? Did he force you? Frank questioned and I shook my head. But I felt really humiliated after. I want no trace of that night, Frank. I really want nothing to do with him. I said truthfully. Why don't you go over and let him know? No, he doesn't even want to see me, I explained sadly. How would he take the news? He'll start thinking I would want money from him? I want nothing from him anymore. I'll see what I can do about the abortion, but please think about it, Chase said and stood up. I have to go to work now. I'll bring you details later, Chase said and left. Please don't ask me why I gave myself to him because honestly Frank, I don't know because I don't even like the guy. Tears fell but not out of pain but confusion. I won't because I respect your decision. The damage has been done but why blame this baby for what he or she is oblivious about? Let him pay for the sins of his father? He walked over and I swallowed a big lump in my throat. He was right, though. This baby is and will always be innocent. I don't want to change my mind, Frank. How dirty and humiliated I felt. He refused to even look at me. I will have that abortion and nothing is going to stop me. I said confidently, wiping the tears away from my face with my palm. Frank took my hand into his and looked down at me. No matter what, Alyssa, I'll always stand by you. Thank you. I went down the streets to go for the job interview. When I arrived there the old woman was around and Tony was the one taking care of everything. Is she the one you wanted us to employ? The old woman asked. She didn't look that old but her hair was gray in a nice way and her face was not too wrinkled. She looked familiar but I couldn't remember where I knew her. Yes, Grandma. She was the one who helped me big time yesterday. Tony smiled as he served a table and walked over. The woman was already seated, her hazel eyes on me. She can't work here with us. I'm not employing her. She shook her head. Oh, ma'am, I have impressive qualities. You can read my resume. I am very hardworking too. I can work really hard. I quickly said but she just eyed the resume. Granny, she's really good. So what? I don't want her. She said stubbornly as she looked away. Please, Grandma. I pleaded. Who's your grandma here? I don't like you so you can leave now. She snapped and I gave up. Thanks anyway, I muttered and gave Tony a weak smile. Please employ her, Grandma. A voice cut in and I turned, knowing that voice all too well. There Daniel stood in his white shirt and sweatpants. He looked so nice and a little grown after these months. He didn't look sad. He actually looked fine. Like life had been going well. She was Daniel's grandma? And why should I because you've said it? What are you doing in this country? Aren't you supposed to be in Rome or something? The woman inquired. Daniel stepped inside. His eyes on me. I couldn't hold his gaze. I just kept my eyes down and placed one of my hands under my big shirt, on my little lump. 
She'll do great I just know when I see it. He commented, avoiding the last question. I don't want any complaint that we are overworking a pregnant girl here. She even underaged, aren't you? She asked and my heart thumped. How did she know I was pregnant? The belly is barely a few months old. Daniel's eyes widened and then dropped to my stomach. I dropped my hand, thinking they could see the pregnancy, but it was barely out. That's not true, Grandma. I'm not pregnant and not underaged. I denied it quickly because by tomorrow this baby will already be flashed out of my system. Oh, so I'm imagining things, huh? More reasons I won't work with you. I don't work with liars. Keep your resume on the table and leave. She waved and I did so and left quickly. He didn't follow me. I saw him take a seat in front of the woman. My phone tore my eyes off the grandma and son and I answered the call. It was Chase. You can come over now. I've talked with the doctor. He's agreed to go on with it. Chase told me and I smiled, taking in a deep breath. How much is he going to charge for the abortion? I asked. Abortion? Someone repeated and I turned in alarm. It was Daniel. He had heard me. I froze. You truly are pregnant and you are going to have an abortion? Alyssa Edwards. What abortion are you talking about, Alyssa? He asked as he walked closer to me. He looked so serious. Can I call you back later, Chase? I told Chase who was still on the line. All right. I hung up. It's not polite to be eavesdropping on people's conversation, Daniel. Cut the crap, Alyssa. Was what Grandma saying true? Are you pregnant? He asked slowly. Yes, I am and I'm going to have an abortion. What has that got to do with you? I snapped angrily. What? No. You can't have an abortion. It's a baby you are carrying. For goodness sakes. He yelled. A baby? Shouldn't you be happy about this abortion? You should be begging me to abort this baby because you should be thinking that I would come and demand child support from you. That it was because of your money I pretended to be a little fragile girl. Tears were falling from my eyes now. What are you saying? That's not what we are even talking about. Well, it is for me. I don't care what you think of me, Alyssa, but you are not having an abortion. That's over my dead body. He spat. Oh, and who's going to stop me? You. I laughed at him. When I remembered how he treated me that night, I gained so much strength to talk right now. Yes, Alyssa. I'm going to stop you because you have my baby growing inside of you and it deserves to live. Point of correction, Patterson. This gold digging baby isn't yours. Who knows maybe I moved on to another billionaire since I was a gold digger to you. I lied and I knew it bruised his ego but I wasn't ready to stop. He was the reason I was going through all this emotional stress. I was happy being just me. You can say whatever you want to make you feel better. You can punch me. Come on hit me but please don't become a murderer. Please. He walked closer but I stepped back. Don't you dare come closer to me, I warned strictly. He stood there, taking in a deep breath. Alyssa, let's reach a consensus. Let's talk like adults, please. I have nothing to talk to you about and there's no way I'm having your baby. So you stay out of this. I warned again. So because of me, you want to flush this baby out? He asked. This has nothing to do with you, Daniel. I'm not ready to be a mother. Do you know how hard it is? I'm not even done with high school. Let's meet halfway, Alyssa. 
Let's talk. If it's money, it's not a problem. Please don't do this. Daniel pleaded, grabbing my arm but I flinched making him surprised. After that night, being touched by men has almost become dreadful for me. I laughed. The last thing we should be talking about is your money, Daniel. What got me into this position in the first place? Do you think money can solve everything? Money isn't going to solve anything for me nor will it wash down all the things you said to me that morning. I saw his face fall at what I said. Yes, he should suffer too. I'm sorry, Daniel. I'm not ready to be a mother. I shook my head and ran off. Tears falling as I ran. I felt so bad. Daniel had made me feel that way and I was mad at him. I'm not ready to take such responsibility. I'll only destroy the baby's life. Hospital. Are you really sure you want to go through with this because I won't be responsible for any damage? The doctor told me. Can there be complications? Of course. Considering the fact that you are too young and you might even lose your life. He added. Doctor, and considering the safer side? I questioned. It can go successful. I want to go on with it, doctor. Please let's do it. I decided when I remembered Daniel's words that morning. I shut my eyes tightly and took in a deep breath. All right. Please sign this document and let Chase also sign too. I nodded and took the pen and signed it. Daniel Patterson I returned to my grandma's coffee shop and she was seated there. I took a seat in front of her but I was absent-minded. What were you talking about with the girl? Are you hitting on this one too? She pointed. No. Grandma, Alyssa isn't like that. She's different. I blurted out. Oh. And where did you meet her? Grandma laughed. It's a long story, Grandma. I don't want to talk about it. I ran my fingers through my disheveled hair. Do you have anything to do with her? What have you done, Daniel? Nothing, Grandma, but I think I almost gave you a grandson. What? The baby is yours? She asked in astonishment. I said nothing. Was. She's going to have an abortion. She doesn't want to have my baby. I shrugged looking away, tears threatening to spill. God. Why did I run away like an idiot that morning? Why did I allow myself to behave like a coward and hurt her? What? And you let her? Which hospital has she gone to? Grandma stood up. I looked up at her in astonishment. Where are you going, Grandma? I'm going to save my grandson. Don't you want to become a daddy? Grandma, I've tried to talk to her. She won't give up. She's hell-bent on getting rid of my baby. What did you do to her? Did you force her? She furrowed her eyebrows at me. What? No. I don't force girls, I bragged and she held my ear. Oh, I can see that. Come on and take me to the hospital. She pulled my ear, pulling me outside. Ouch, Grandma. You're hurting me. I winced and she let me go. I took out my car keys and helped Grandma into the passenger seat and I drove there. The hospital I know she'd go to. Once we arrived there, Grandma waited for me to stop the car and got down immediately. Grandma? Grandma? I called after her but she didn't even turn to me. I got down too and chased after her. She was making a call when I reached her side. She's already in the surgery room, Daniel. Grandma informed me and I gave her a slight nod but I was sad. If Alyssa wanted to punish me this way, then she really has gotten me right where it hurts a lot. I stopped and let Granny go. 
I didn't know what to feel nor what to do. I just walked out of the hospital to find one of the benches to sit on. My firstborn has been terminated. Alyssa has succeeded in changing and hurting me. Tears filled my eyes, startling me because I'm not the type to be touched into tears no matter the story, but this had really gotten to me. I placed my elbows on my knees and held my head in between my palms, taking in a deep breath. Alyssa's revenge really hurts. Alyssa Edwards I sat in front of Grandma Patterson as she scowled at me. I sat there, fumbling with my fingers, looking down at my hands. Do you know how disappointed you've made me now? Do you know how many women out there are looking for babies to even adopt and you are just going to flush this one away because of how stupid my grandson has been? She yelled at me. It's not because of Daniel. I have my own reasons. I stuttered. Finance? Name your price. I'll pay. Come on, tell me how much you want. I mean, that's why you came into his life, isn't it? She asked and I furrowed my eyebrows at her. What do you mean? I can take care of the baby financially. I don't need Patterson money. I shook my head. Then I think we don't have a problem with you attempting to get rid of this baby anymore, do we? She asked and I reluctantly nodded. But I want you to remember one thing. You are not Daniel's type. No matter what history you had with him, no matter the situation which made him touch you, whether he was drunk or high, I don't care but I want you to know that you aren't a good type and I hope you know that. What? I don't love your son if that's what you think. I don't even want to see his face. I spat. That's what they all say, but they end up becoming gold diggers. I will want you to sign a document tomorrow that once you deliver this baby, you'll hand it over to us. You do realize you have nothing to give this baby, right? To talk about quality education, good food, and shelter, she said, sizing me up. My sister isn't going to sign any document, Missy. Frank cut in as he placed his arms around my neck. Having his hand on my neck snatched me from breaking down in front of Daniel's grandma. I was on the verge of giving in and letting this all go, but Frank's voice and hand strengthened me out of nowhere. I stood up before I could burst into tears. How dare you insult my sister just because of that stupid money you claim you have, huh? He yelled at her and her mouth fell agape. Such impudence. Was this how you were brought up, young man? She asked. Exactly, and this is the same way your grandchild is going to be raised. You hate this life, right? Frank told her. You dare not and let her sign the papers, young man. It'll be for the benefit of both of you. You'll be giving lots and lots of money. We know, but we don't need your money. We are better off without it. He yelled again. Let's go, Alyssa, Frank said, pulling me away. The moment we got out of the hospital's cafeteria, I burst into tears and Frank hugged me. Calm down, Alyssa. Thank goodness I found you early. Why did you meet that woman up alone? She was the one who stopped me from going ahead with the surgery. Don't worry. I came to get you because Chase got a job somewhere else and so he's occupying another house in Texas. We have to go with him. We're done packing. He told me as we headed to his car. So we're leaving for Texas? Yes. You'll find another job which won't let you stress. Besides, he begged me to come with him because he couldn't live alone there. His parents aren't around. We got inside and he started the car. So I was going to leave this town where I'll throw away the horrible memories this town has given me. Especially, Daniel Patterson. Daniel Patterson. I went back inside and saw Grandma coming out. She looked a little absent-minded. 
Grandma, what happened? Forget about that girl, Daniel. And forget about your child because she didn't even listen to me. She walked out on me and went into the room. Your baby is already gone. She explained. Alyssa will never do that. I blurted out. She is only seeking attention but I tell you, she will appear soon to demand money from us. I've seen her likes and they always come back. Grandma, she's not a harlot, I said in a whisper. Is there another name for a girl who sleeps with a guy who she doesn't love or a guy she isn't married to? I went silent. Alyssa Edwards I packed my things as the two boys sent them into Chase's Pathfinder. Frank came back shortly after. Frank, maybe I should still carry on with the abortion when we get to Texas. I told him honestly and he frowned. Are you still thinking about what happened today? No. I'm thinking about the burden we'll face there. I being a single mother, not knowing anything about mothering and our income. I estimated. Why? Did the doctor say anything scary? He teased and I laughed. The first real laughter I had had that day. Stop joking, Frank. We're talking about feeding two mouths. I told him. You mean you and me? She means she's going to have twins. Chase cut in and Frank's eyes went wild. I mean, it's still pretty early, but so far we can hear two heartbeats. What? You are going to have twins? Wow. He laughed as he gave me a bear hug. If you are worried about how to cater for them, don't worry, we'll get by. Chase told me and I gave him a smile. Yes. From now onwards we'll work harder. You don't have to worry about anything. Frank assured me. I gave them a forced smile as they took my boxes out. I walked to my full-length mirror and looked at myself. Slowly, I lifted my t-shirt and took a look at my belly which was just a small lump. I'm going to become a mother. A small chuckle escaped my lips and that brought tears to my eyes. Then my eyes fell on the locket Daniel had bought for me that night. I touched it and remembered how he begged me to keep it on always. I didn't take it off. I'm supposed to throw it away but he spent too much to buy it. I took a deep breath. I'm going to start a new life. Alyssa. A familiar voice called and I turned to face him. Don't leave. Alyssa Edwards. Why are you leaving? Nick asked, his voice full of concern. I have to go Nick. I'm not safe here. Why? Did something happen with Daniel? He asked quickly. His grandmother found out about the pregnancy. You are pregnant? When did that happen? Did grandma find out? Is the baby for Daniel? He asked unsure as his gaze dropped to my belly. To be honest with you, Nick. I don't know what to do now. I shook my head as tears streamed down my face. Hey, hey, why is she crying? Chase came inside the bedroom and glared at Nick. No, Chase. I'm fine. In fact, this is Nick, my friend. I introduced, wiping my tears. What did Grandma say? Nick asked again. Grandma? I asked as Chase picked up my suitcase and went out. Daniel is my cousin, Nick confessed and my mouth fell at that which made Nick quickly continue. But not that close to me. We have the same grandma. I don't live with them anymore. I thought Nick was Daniel's friend. Wait, let me guess, she wanted you to have an abortion? I shook my head. She wanted me to hand over my babies the moment I deliver them. Then she'll give me lots of money to go far away, but I refused. I explained. Nick froze at my words. 
You chose, you chose your baby? His eyes were glassy for a second before he looked away. I did, I whispered, going back to what I almost did today. I almost signed away my children. My children like what a careless mother would have done. Right off the bat, I had failed as a mother. Then you need to go because she won't give up. Will you be fine? Yes. I'll be fine. I nodded and he hugged me. I'm really going to miss you. Promise me you'll take care of yourself, okay? He cupped my cheeks and I looked up at him. I'll be fine, Nick. Come on, I want to speak with your brother. He told me and left the room. I knew it was about Patterson, so I eavesdropped on them. You need to keep an eye on Alyssa very closely. Frank. My grandma is very dangerous, and once she knows her first grandchild is going to be born, she'll do everything to get the baby. You have no idea what she can do, Nick told my brother when he met him downstairs. Why won't she leave us alone? She doesn't want her blood to stay out of her sight. Because of their wealth, people despise them and they can blackmail them with their descendants. And she also doesn't want her blood to lack anything or live in poverty. He added and my heart thumped hard. How far can she go? Kill. She can. That's why I want you to take good care of her. I want you to keep an eye on her. Alyssa is very dear to me, Nick said seriously. Don't worry. No one is going to hurt my sister. It's a goodbye, then. He smiled and left. Daniel Patterson. I laid in my room, staring at the ceiling when someone knocked on my door. Come in. The door opened and it was my dad. I quickly sat up. He walked in slowly with grace. You can sit, Junior. He told me and I did so. He pulled a seat and sat in front of me. My mother told me about that young girl. I was surprised when he didn't call Alyssa names too. Why don't you call her a harlot too? I said in a sotto voice, looking down. I met her at the gala and I sure know how to identify gold diggers when I see them. I raised my gaze to meet his. He relaxed in his chair and stared into space. When I first met Nick's mother, no one told me she was not a keeper. She even told me herself that she could not do families, but I still didn't mind. She was fun and all that. I thought tying her down with a baby will help her to change and stay with me, but no. The moment she delivered Nick she went back to her old ways, and you know the funny thing? He asked me and I shook my head. He laughed. That policeman was the person to change her. My wealth. My name wasn't able to change her, but some poor, unattractive guy was the person to do the job. What I'm trying to say is, Junior. Sometimes some situations don't need us. Alyssa may not need you because you are not programmed to be there. I'm not in love with her dad. That's what I told myself. Why would I be in love with someone like that? Am I crazy? But when I saw her in the hospital with my son in her arms, I knew who my heart beat for. Did you ever tell her? That I loved her? He laughed. Are you nuts? That's where the mistake came from. I didn't let her know and when I did it was too late for me. And my mother ruined everything when she tried to steal Nick from her. Grandma did. Nick even lived here for some time but to have him hate me, I took him back to his mother, dad told me and I went silent. All I want to say is that when you have someone you are attracted to, don't let her go, but do not rush things. Don't wait till it's too late. Dad, I think you are misunderstanding things. We are not in love with each other. I don't like her just yet. I wanted to give us a try, but it turns out there'll be no us. You think I'm a young lad? 
You don't like her and you refuse to turn up at the office and she has also left town. Oh, she did. You think I'll let her go just like that? I know when she has an effect on you. Dad, I'm not feeling well that's why I haven't been coming there. I'll go there tomorrow. I half lied. It's not a man's weakness when he falls in love so don't be afraid to feel that way. I took in a deep breath. Grandma might hurt her. That's what I'm afraid of. And I freaked out that night. That's all. I told him honestly. So you how are you protecting them? I sent them off to Texas through a friend called Chase. I'll provide for them financially and they'll be living in one of our houses over there. Grandma won't know. Dad broke into laughter. Who told you you weren't in love? Alyssa Edwards. When Chase pulled out in front of the house, I gawked at it. I thought he said it was a small apartment but this was a mansion. Chase? I thought you said it was a small house. I couldn't keep calm. I got down and stared up the house. It was breathtaking. I didn't want to scare you that much, Chase said unsure. You and your babies deserve the best. I hope this is going to be an enabling environment for your babies, he said and I nodded. It's perfect. Thank you for what you've done, I said excitedly. Frank just stood there. It's good you like it. Go choose your room. Frank spoke and I nodded, running inside. Frank Edwards. Alyssa ran inside and I turned to Chase. Don't tell her, dude. She won't stay here if she knows where it's coming from. I told him and he nodded. Why did you accept this? We can't hit the enemy with nothing but its own teeth. This is the last place the woman will look for us. We're safe here and she needs comfort. That Daniel shouldn't try anything stupid. He still thinks the baby has been aborted so don't worry. I nodded and walked inside. Alyssa was looking around. This whole house is for you and my little nieces so enjoy. I told her and she laughed. You want nieces? Of course as cute as you. I chuckled as I hugged her. The Patterson family has the likeness for sons and once she delivers a son, then it will wage war. For why years later? Daniel Patterson. Hello, brother-in-law. Yolanda greeted the moment she entered the hall. She was in a blue blouse and faded denim jeans. She looked so beautiful this morning. She was Nick Troy's girlfriend. I was coming from the gym room. I was in gray sweatpants and a shirt. What brings you to my apartment, Yolanda? I asked and she laughed. Well, I was sent by your grandma. I furrowed my eyebrows at her. Why would she send you here? I laughed at the idea as I walked to the kitchen to get her something to drink. I can't just ignore her calling so please bear with me. She told me to take you out tonight so we can get you a girlfriend. You haven't been seen with a girl for a while now. She jested and I chuckled. So what does she expect me to do? You should go out with me and see some pretty girls. The poor woman is starting to believe that you are gay but then she remembers your sexual escapade with Alyssa she gets little hope. I froze when she mentioned that name. Oh, I'm truly sorry. I thought you have gotten over her. She apologized quickly when she saw me tense up. I have but I haven't forgotten what she did to me. I would have been a father by now. She has taken that joy from me. I seethed sadly. The pain of losing my firstborn was still in my heart. I never heard the full story. So she really went on with the abortion? Yes. I guess. She told me she wasn't ready to become a mother so she had to abort the baby and I had no option, since I can't be the one to carry the baby. 
I shrugged nonchalantly as I handed her a cup of coffee. I sat beside her. Do you know where she is? I nodded honestly. But I don't want to see her just yet. I just wish her well, that's all. Come on, then, I have no problem let's go. Don't you want to have some fun? She offered and I couldn't turn down the offer. Texas. Alyssa Edwards. Mummy, mummy, Uncle Chase took us out today. Austin stained my shirt. Justin ran to me the moment I entered the hall. His small frame running towards me. Austin trailed behind him. The photocopy of his brother. Liar. It was an accident. Justin explained as he stood in front of me. Really? He didn't apologize. Mummy. Austin frowned. Chase came out holding a glass of juice. I smiled not knowing what to say. Uh. Huh. We were making juice. Try mummy. Justin ran to Chase and took the glass of weird juice from him and jogged back to me. What is that? We added lemon. Austin started. Tomatoes. Oranges. Brussels sprouts. Justin completed the sentence and I tried to remain calm. That was some weird combination. Where did you learn to prepare something like that? I laughed nervously, taking the glass Justin offered. Internet. Uncle Chase did. Austin clapped with a smile. Don't drink it. It tastes weird. Chase lip synced. Drink, mum. Austin beckoned and I brought the glass to my lips. Eyeing Chase, but my two boys stood there expectantly as they waited for my comment. I took a sip and grimaced when I swallowed it. How? How is it taste, mum? Austin asked with puppy eyes. Good. I faked a smile. Really? Yay! Finish it, Justin suggested and Chase intervened fast taking the glass from me. Kids, your mother will finish this later. He told them and they groaned. Yes, mum, we love you. Both of them hugged me and ran upstairs. These kids are incredible, Chase commented as I stood up. They'll kill me. Raising two boys isn't going to be easy, is it? I asked exasperatedly. You'll survive. He laughed. I walked towards the kitchen. Where's Frank? I asked as I poured myself a glass of water to wash the bitter taste of their drink. He's still at work. Here, take this. He handed me an envelope and I took it, opening it. It was full of cash. Why do you give me an envelope every month? You're giving us accommodation. It's already enough, so why give this to us? You have two boys already, Alyssa. You need this to support yourself, so just accept it or you'll make me feel bad. He cooed. Frank entered the hall and his eyes fell on the envelope. Alyssa is not taking the envelope again, Chase. Return it. Frank stated and I frowned. Return it? Why? Who has been sending this? I asked when my heart skipped a beat. Alyssa Edwards. Why should Chase return the money? Why? Where has it been coming from? I asked and they all went silent. Frank? He looked away from me. Who has been sending this? We wanted to tell you, but we were afraid that you'll get mad. Chase started and I frowned. It's from Daniel? I gasped when I realized that it was true. Alyssa, calm down and let's explain. Explain what? You guys have been lying to me. Do you guys know what his granny will do? I cried. We wanted to protect you. 
That's why we did that. Is this also his house? I looked between them and Chase nodded slightly, looking away. Oh my god, I can't believe this. You guys have any idea that you are putting me and my son's lives in danger? I yelled. No, we aren't, Alyssa. We are trying to protect you and this is the only place. You'll be safe. You and my nephews. Frank explained calmly and I ran my fingers through my hair. But I didn't want to depend on him. You said so, Frank. Then why didn't you let me take some money from them? That's like the same thing. I chuckled. That's bullshit, Alyssa. We are not depending on anyone. He doesn't even know Austin and Justin exist. So there's nothing to worry about. How sure are you? He doesn't. I'm sure. Chase said. Oh, really but I still don't want to live in this house. Frank, we're leaving tomorrow. I said and walked out. I entered my baby's room and Austin standing in front of the mirror, wasting the baby powder whilst Justin was playing his water game. Austin had my brown hair and Justin almost had dyed blonde hair, just like his father but they both had Daniel's beautiful brown eyes which ran through the Patterson family. They greatly resembled Daniel and I guess he'll be amazed but I wasn't prepared to let him know of their existence. Guys, please go to bed, I told them and the way my voice came out made them turn. Mummy, is something wrong? Austin was the first to ask and I couldn't hide it from them because tears were falling. Is it a bad man again? Austin cut in as they led me to their bed. They preferred to sleep together. Something like that. I laughed. Oh, mum, don't cry. We will protect you. Austin pouted hugging me. I know dears. And I appreciate that a lot, but I want you to know that tomorrow we'll have to leave so get ready. They aren't going anywhere, Alyssa. Why are you making a big fuss about this? Frank sneered as he entered the room. I'm not, Frank. You know how dangerous the Patterson is. You know it so please don't pretend. You even saw the grandmother, right? Frank directed his gaze to the kids and I got the message. I'm not talking about this with you. I stood up and left. Next day. Daniel Patterson. I was awoken by someone touching my face lightly. I opened my eyes and saw this blonde, lying beside me. We were both naked. Good morning, baby. She greeted running a finger on my chest. I grabbed her hand. Don't touch me, I said unsure. I was still registering my surroundings, but I quickly registered that I was in my room. What's wrong with you? Why are you acting this way? She yelled at me as I pushed her away and got out of bed. What the fuck are you doing in my bed? Excuse me. You were the one who brought me here yesterday and you pretend like you don't remember? Get dressed and leave. I told her slipping on my boxers and adding my jeans. How could Yolanda do this to me? I muttered, taking my phone. I dialed her number but no one picked up. She got some explaining to do. Alyssa Edwards I paid the cab driver and got out with my kids as Austin ran to the side. Austin, be careful, don't do that again. I shrieked, taking Justin's hand and crossing the road. Why here, mum? Austin asked, looking around. We are coming to spend our holidays here, honey. I wanted you to come to school here. I lied looking at the big house Nick had given me directions to. Wow, mom are we going to live here? Look at a statute, Justin. I took both their hands and walked to the front door and knocked. I didn't want to lose these stubborn boys. 
Someone opened the door, and it was a girl. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I waved. We are looking for Uncle Nick, Austin told her. Shush, honey. Adults are talking now. Oh, hi. I'm Yolanda, Nick's girlfriend. She smiled at me then at Austin and Justin. They waved. He's upstairs. Come on in. She took my bag and we got in. We sat down but Austin and Justin ran around. Guys, will you sit down? Oh, leave them be. Alyssa, we thought you aborted the baby. She asked astonished with a chuckle. I didn't. I, I changed my mind. I came here because I had nowhere to go. I understand. Let me go get Nick. Daniel Patterson. I got out of my car and entered Yolanda's compound. She had to explain why she did that last night. We agreed to just have some fun and she just blew everything. I found some kids playing outside. When did Yolanda get kids? Hello, kids. They turned and I walked over. They were twins and my heart skipped a beat. They were so cute. Catchy coffee-colored eyes. One with brown hair and one with almost dyed blonde hair. Look, Austin, that's dyed blonde. One of them pointed and I chuckled touching my hair. Oh, yeah, it's natural. My friends think mine is dyed. He pouted and I drew closer, bending to their height. There are a few people who have this, you know. I inherited it from my mother. I laughed. My mother doesn't have this hair too. The other one said and I grinned. Wow, whose kids are these? They are so adorable. They spoke like adults. Maybe your dad has it. They said in unison, really? I was just marveled at how they were. So is Aunt Yolanda in? Yes. She's talking with our mother inside. One of them pointed and I nodded. I'll go inside now, okay? I have to see Aunt Yolanda. Can you come to visit us sometime because we'll be living here? One said and I nodded. I will. Daniel Patterson. I was about to knock on the door when Yolanda opened the door for me. Oh, hey, Daniel, what are you doing here? She laughed nervously and that reminded me why I was here, but the little angels I saw a while ago had helped evaporated all the angst. I came with. Scratch that, Yali. When did you become a babysitter? I frowned. Babysitter? Oh, yeah, um. The neighbor went to work so I decided to help her. She laughed but it didn't reach her eyes. I realized she was hiding something. Either she was with someone inside there. Maybe she was cheating on Nick? I was bored so I decided to come here for a visit. I grinned, slipping my hands into my pocket. Oh, okay. She hesitated before she moved and let me inside. I looked around and took a seat in the hall. Let me get something for you. What would you like to have? Cocktail or anything soft? She disappeared to go get it for me. Uncle Nicholas, we have been yearning to see you. When Mummy told us we were coming to stay here, we were so happy. I heard the twins' voice approaching the door and a manly laugh. Aww, that's great. Let's go inside and talk with your mother. I frowned. What was going on? The front door opened and Nick walked in holding the two boys' hands. Oh, hey, Daniel, what are you doing here? He beamed. Can't I visit? Where do you know these boys? And who's their mother? Nick just stood there. Yolanda came out with my glass. 
What are you guys hiding? Do you guys have kids and I don't know or? Enlighten me here, Nick. I told you about them, didn't I? Yolanda whispered and I nodded licking my lips. All right, then I'll take my leave. I told them. I'll call you, Daniel, Nick told me and I nodded. I crouched in front of the kids with a smile. They made my heart leap happily in my chest. I have to go guys, I promise that the next time we meet, I'll take both of you out to the park, okay? They nodded with a big smile on their faces. I ruffled their hair, standing upright. I looked at Nick and Yolanda. They avoided gaze with me. Yeah, since you guys will be living here, that will make it quite easy and I'd love to meet the mother who birthed angels like both of you. I ruffled their hair lovingly and they laughed. I nodded and left the house. There's something fishy going on. Alyssa Edwards I descended the staircase once the front door shut, indicating Daniel had left. Austin and Justin ran to the lobby to play. He won't suspect anything. He barely mentions you, Yolanda whispered and I nodded. I came here to hide from him not encounter him more often. He rarely comes here, Alyssa. I can assure you that. Ignore him. Yolanda assured and I nodded. Why didn't you tell Frank you were coming here? He's worried. Nick interjected. Did you tell him I came to you? No. Don't worry but I hope you settle whatever it is you have with him and go back. You are catering for twins and it's no easy task. He advised and I took a seat. You have no idea what they did. They had been accepting money from Daniel all these months and they never told me a thing. I blurted out and they gawked at me. Why would Frank do that? He claims he was trying to protect us, but how would he do that when he saw how violent your grandmother is? I somehow support Frank's idea. She won't look for you in that house. You were safe. I can't guarantee that she won't find out about these boys sooner or later. Nick informed and I got a little scared. Does she still look for me? She found out the doctor didn't perform the abortion so the possibility that you kept the baby was high. She thinks you want to blackmail them someday. That's the last thing I'll do. The last time I received help from the Pattersons, that gave Daniel the ticket to ruin my life and I want no more of that. I said adamantly. So you plan to keep them from Daniel forever? Yolanda asked and I nodded after thinking about it. What good will it do if he knows they exist? He made it clear that night that he was done with me so I accept that. Daniel Patterson I entered my grandmother's study room and heard her yelling at one of her men. Whoa, Granny, relax or you'll grow fatigued. I jested as I entered and she smiled. Go and do just that, okay? She told the guy and he left. What's wrong now, honey? I just miss you that's why. I smirked. M.M., how about we have dinner at the beachside today? Sounds good. Call up Clara. Come with her, she said and I froze. Why her? I like her. She's from a good family and I know her parents too. She shrugged nonchalantly. I thought you promised me you would be patient. I still haven't found the right one. Clara is just a fuck buddy. I don't consider her in things like this. Well, you need to know that the gold digger is in town. She spat. Who are you talking about? That insolent Alyssa is in town and God knows why she's here. My heart skipped a beat at the name. I swallowed a big lump in my throat. Alyssa is back. I said unsure, thinking hard. Love never died. Daniel Patterson
Hello, sir. We have a lead on the young miss. She's at the mall. Mark informed me on the phone and my heart skipped a beat. Really? I'm on my way there. Continue to keep an eye on her. I quickly got up from my bed. Grandma walked in. She was already dressed up for our dinner. Whoa, where are you going in such a hurry? Grandma, can we postpone this dinner? I have to go somewhere extremely important. Where are you going? I've found Alyssa and I have to talk with her. So please. You found her? She followed me out of my room as I hurried downstairs, grabbing one of the car keys. I didn't even know why I wanted to speak with her, but I wanted to speak with her. I wanted to see her because it's been a while. Yeah, I hired some men to do that. See you in the evening, Granny. I waved and left. As I drove to the mall, a lot of things came to mind. I realized that I had missed her very much and we didn't end on a nice note. I pulled out in the parking lot and ran inside, calling Mark. Where the hell is she? I looked around the vast hall, getting a little impatient. She's at the baby store. Baby store? I reiterated, unsure, and hung up. I headed there and saw her examining a baby shirt. My heart started to ache. If she hadn't aborted the baby, we would have become parents by now. Alyssa? My voice came out hoarse. She turned quickly and was startled to see me. She had grown well. She looked grown up, more beautiful, and womanly. How did you? Alyssa, please let's talk. Just a minute. I begged calmly. There's nothing for us to talk about, she said and I laughed. Of course, there is. Just give me some minutes and let's talk this through. She seemed to be debating on something because she bit her lower lips nervously and stared at me. After that, you promise to stay away from me? I can't promise you that but I will try. I smiled at her. She sighed and grabbed some baby food. What are you doing with those? Don't tell me you got married? I followed her as she picked more things and placed them into her shopping cart. I might be a babysitter for all you know. She rolled her eyes at me and walked on. We walked to the counter to pay for the things, but she rummaged through her things looking for her purse, but couldn't find it. She smiled at the shop attendant and kept searching. Use this one. I quickly took out my card and gave it to the cashier and she took it. You shouldn't be the one to pay for that. She eyed me. Then you expect us to stand here for hours while you look for the purse which you might have left home? Here you go, sir, the cashier said and handed my card to me. She packaged the things and I took them before she grabbed the bags. Since both of you bought so many twin shirts, you'll be given some gifts. Here, the cashier held out a beautiful bracelet. Twin shirts? Was she babysitting twins now? You can give it to your wife here. She smiled. He's not my. Thank you. I'll take it. I took it and walked out before Alyssa could talk more. You didn't bring a car? I'm taking a cab home. Great. Then we can talk in my car. I'll drive you home. I walked over to my red convertible. No way. I'm taking a cab home. Hand my things over. We promised we'd talk, so let's talk in my car. I don't want to talk anymore, so just hand over my things and let me leave. No, I smirked and placed the things in the back seat and locked the convertible. What are you doing, Daniel? Stop jesting and hand my things over. We aren't kids anymore, so just let me go. She whined. Then I think you should behave as such, Alyssa Edwards. I smiled and leaned on my car, 
staring at her with open interest. She stood there hesitantly. Okay, what do you want? I want you to know that I, I, all of a sudden, I didn't know what to say anymore. It was either everything had evaporated from my head or I didn't have anything important to say. Maybe I just wanted to see her after all these years. Maybe that was the case. It's obvious you just want to waste my time, Daniel. Listen, I no longer owe you. I paid a very heavy price for your Ferrari and my brother's hospital bills years ago so I don't see. I closed my eyes tightly and sighed. That is not why I am looking for you Alyssa and about that night, I am truly sorry for. I lost my words again. Why bring this topic up? I don't want to talk about this, especially with you. I saw a flash of tears in her eyes. I want to clear some things that's why I want you to get it. I'm sorry I said those hurtful words that night. Just take me to my child. Your child? You told you that lie? She huffed. There isn't? Who told you there is? Her voice was starting to get cranky now. Her eyes were wide and she looked as if something I said angered her. You bought baby clothes, right? And I heard you never aborted the baby so you made me a dad, right? I asked her, hope building in me. A friend of mine is having a baby shower and I wanted to get something for her, that's all. If that's what gave you the thought that I have a baby, then I'm sorry. And if I had a baby with you, do you think it's still going to be wearing these small clothes? My heart fell. Then, what happened? Forget about a child or anything related to that for that matter, Daniel. It's already been years. My mouth opened but nothing came out. Is that all? I didn't answer. She walked over to the car and opened it, taking her things out and leaving me. Again.